Hi, I'm Maggie Nielsen, Mrs. Average Joe Cyclist, and I'm narrating today a ride that Joe has taken around the Stanley Park seawall. A ride around the seawall should take anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes. Of course, it can be much longer if you stop at many of the wonderful sightseeing areas along the way or any of the beautiful restaurants. We've edited this video down to 10 minutes so that you can get a sense of the highlights and the complexity of the ride. And you'll notice as we're traveling here that we are traveling in a counterclockwise direction. That is the uh, required uh, travel for cyclists and rollerbladers. Pedestrians can go in either direction, but you see the directional aerial on the concrete to keep you headed in the right direction. That doesn't mean you won't find some people going the wrong way, but usually someone will point that out. And you also have to be careful in these areas. We have buses unloading and people are swarming in and out of the cycle lanes to cross over to the footpath. On our left, we're coming up to Brockton Oval, uh, which has a fabulous, fabulous uh, display of ancient totem, totem poles that have been beautifully restored. And as you can see, even though the traffic is fairly light uh, today on Joe's ride, there are groups meandering all over the cycling route. As Joe indicates, a bell is useful. I find most, most cyclists in general to be, be fairly courteous. They're not trying to deliberately block you. Coming up is the Harry Jerome statue. Uh, local hero Harry Jerome participated in track and field in more than one Olympics and set some gold records. And the nine o'clock gun. Coming up on your right, that is a Vancouver institution being shot off at nine o'clock every night. It's quite loud if you're uh, in the city, but uh, out in the suburbs, you can still hear it. And we're starting to approach the Brockton Point Lighthouse. As you leave Brockton Lighthouse, you start to head into Lumberman's Arch, which is another picnic area. It's a short walk up to the Vancouver Aquarium, uh, which is off to your left from Lumberman's Arch. Uh, there's also a water park at Lumberman's Arch, a beautiful monument of an old growth tree, and a food pavilion. Highly recommend that you walk in this area. There's usually a lot of children in the area and there is a small little system of gates here to uh, maneuver your bike. As we mentioned before, Stanley Park is uh, very well used by cyclists and as Joe is indicating there, he was feeling quite lucky to pass by this large group of tourists as no doubt they would not be keeping his pace. And also you can see here that the path becomes quite narrow and it's actually elevated. Um, so it makes it more and more difficult uh, to pass and you do end up behind uh, slower people for quite some time. This gives you a really good indication of how this seawall has literally been carved out of the out of the bush. Some of the cliffs are quite uh, quite high overhanging.
This is Joe's uh, very, very favorite outdoor pool in the whole city of Vancouver. It is a spectacularly large, gently shallow pool for lots of family activities as well as uh, lanes for speed swimming. Also at Second Beach, you have another picnic area, child's playground, and a food pavilion. Uh, now you're heading into Lost Lagoon under this cute little tunnel, bicycle only tunnel, very sweet. And in this area, again, you have to be mindful because there are a lot of uh, wildlife. There's squirrels, uh, all kinds of birds, geese, and swans, and everything else you can think of lives in this park. On your left is Lost Lagoon, as Joe's indicating there. There are geese and swans in this area, uh, quite a number of them, so they will often wander into the lanes. If you haven't had a lot of exposure to geese and swans, the, the ones to watch out for are the swans because they can be aggressive and they have very big bills that so can really bite you hard. The geese are usually cowards, and if you make eye contact with them, they'll usually turn and walk in the, the opposite direction, still hissing at you madly. But they're generally cowards at heart. In this area we're coming up to, there is a food pavilion on your left. All the food pavilions in Stanley Park also have washroom facilities, so it's a very nice ride from that point of view. And we're, Joe's coming into, as he's looking around, coming into the tunnel that runs under Georgia Street, uh, the Georgia Street uh, segue into the causeway that takes you through to Lionsgate Bridge. He's actually on the wrong side of the road in this particular spot, but there's not a lot of traffic, so it doesn't seem to be a problem. And now you've left Lost Lagoon and you're coming back into, again, Cole Harbor. We're very close to completing our circuit now. And up ahead is the Rowing Club of Vancouver, which has lovely uh, entertainment rooms set out uh, with lovely water and harbor views and they can be rented for any occasion. It's not evident in this uh, film but this uh, bike lane is elevated and it's quite a quite a steep drop so while that's nice to keep the pedestrians from ambling into the lane it makes it difficult to maneuver if you want if you have to leave the lane to get around someone. And off in the distance on the left-hand side, there is a statue of Lord Stanley, if you wanted to make a trek. And this is a common site in Vancouver. We have a large student population, and obviously we're a great tourist destination. So you'll find skaters of all skill levels on the, uh, on the cycle path, and Joe's conceding defeat, and he's going to get off the cycle path and uh, go around her. Not quite sure why she's holding her helmet. And thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you can plan on enjoying a lovely ride around Stanley Park in the near future.